Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a special guest. Everyone is a special guest because uh, they're on my show, but I'm joined by my frat brother, Frank Bonner. Now, we have not met in person. Uh, I think I've said that like a bunch of times with many guests, but the podcast world has connected us and particularly the world of Alpha Phi Alpha and Attorney Incorporated has connected us. And this gentleman is stationed right now in the uh, Virginia area. Shout out to Vacapath, and uh, we connected uh, in regards to being creative, supporting our fraternity, just doing all kinds of different things. And um, I wanted to just, you know, have him on the podcast because you know it's a it's an instant vibe. I, I meet a lot of people. Was it in a town of two? Uh, you know, we have someone. Uh, I probably murdered that that poem. Apologies to all the fraternity brothers, but. It just means that we already had a, a shared connection, a shared vibe. We had, a, you know, we got on the phone, we text, we support each other. And because of that, I definitely want to get him on the podcast, especially because he's doing a lot of things in the creative space uh, with all his skills. So before we get into this episode about expressing ourselves creative uh, in, in a creative space and using our talents, uh, brother, brother Bonner, go ahead and introduce yourself to the listener. Hey, uh, first off, thank you for having me on the show. I'm super excited to have the opportunity uh, to be here on this podcast, man. I'm an avid listener. You know what I'm saying? Uh, going through some of the guests who have been far more interesting than 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 I believe I will be uh, on the podcast today. But good gracious, it's such an honor to be here today. Um, and I'm um, just excited. Just, uh, you know, Frank Bonner, as you said, uh, 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 a creative, you know, an alpha brother who's just out there looking to change uh, to ensure that I keep updating those five people I spend the most time with, because those are the people who are going to shape the, the person you are. The five people you spend the most time with are the sum. You are the sum of the people you spend that type of time with. One, we're not going to be not on here on that self-deprecation, whatever. I already know that you're an amazing person. Um, and so in regards, to you, you obviously serve our country. Uh, shout out to you and I appreciate that. But in addition to serving your country, you are amazingly creative. You express yourself, especially in the creative uh, space of, you know, photography, graphic design, um, you know, media, uh, audio, all those different things. So let's go back. So you have a military career. Right. One. How did you start getting into the space of, you know, expressing yourself or uh, honing your skills uh, with creative endeavors? You know what's crazy? Um I think people say this all the time. And now that I'm sitting here under the mic, I'm probably saying it. I'm going to say it. But um, I feel like I've always been a creative person to some yeah. degree, but just not recognizing it. You know what I mean? Um, I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. Right. And so growing up in an environment uh, unique to me in L.A., uh, there are other things that uh, you probably were looking out for. You didn't have the opportunity to pick up a paintbrush and start painting. You were kind of yeah. worried about ducking, you know, <laughs> more separate <laughs> paint or something like that. But point <laughs> As far as I can remember, I've always been a creative person. I just not not realizing that. I've always been fascinated with cameras from the video uh, perspective. Um, I, I've sang, I've danced. Um, I thought I wanted to be a magician at one point in time. Just yeah. always trying wild things, man. Um, speaking of that, I had this one time I did this uh, magic show. I, I had just got this magic kit for my birthday. Um, and it was like two weeks later. I hadn't even practiced these tricks. I just understood them like maybe one good time. And I put on a magic show at like a, the community center. Man, every trick I tried went horribly, man. It was it like <laughs> I love that. I love that. I failed at every single trick, but uh it was just it's just always been something I've been I've been into, um, just being creative. It's not until um joining the military, uh, you know, in the in the Navy where you spend a, a lot of time traveling, I had taken some trips and told some people about the amazing fun I had. I was like, hey man, there was a giraffe that poked his head in my window in my hotel. And then people were like, man, you lying. You know how you, you talk to your boys, they're like, man, you yeah. lying. You, ain't no giraffe poked their window in your hotel room, man. Shut up. 
um, and, and deal them dominoes. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I was like, man, the only way I'm gonna get these dudes to believe me is if like the next time I go, I'm gonna take a camera. So I took a camera, uh, a video camera at this point in time. And I just tried to record everything, man. I recorded everything that was odd and crazy. Um, ended up turning into a micro recruiter with that. Cause people were like, man, you did what? You did what? And it just evolved from there. So um, the, the creative story. piece. So, so with that being said, so, okay, so you grew up uh, in Los Angeles. Um, for the listeners, where did you go to college? And then at, was, wh when did you start, like you're right, like you said, the boys didn't believe you. When did you start tinkering with these different modes of expression, like the photography and all that? Stuff? Um, I went to college at a Howard University uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, military, Uncle Sam paid for that. Thank you. Uh, but a bison, you know, my H.U. people out there, you know, uh, got to represent uh, Howard uh, out there. Um, and, and to the tinkering question, um, assuming like I've tinkered always, but like really taking it serious. Um, kind of going back to that deployment kind of story I gave you. Um, you know, sometimes you record stuff when you first start off and you're like, man, everything is interesting. So I got this two hour long video and I'm trying to show somebody this one interesting part. And they're like, man, get to the point. You're like, nah, but hold up, hold up. Oh, and I'm telling you, I had to learn how to shorten that stuff. So that's where the editing came in. I was like, I got to make these more interesting. I got to find a way to put music to these videos. Then I put music to my videos and then people were like, oh, they were actually watching, you know, my whole little creations and just that, that dopamine that you get from people just loving what you, what you want. You know, I'm an old cat. So Facebook, Instagram, that didn't exactly exist. I'm literally, you know, pulling out a little CD player with a screen on it, <laughs> trying to show yeah. people this, this yeah. video about a, a, you know, tiger I touched in, in, at, Nong Nook Animal Park or something crazy like that but and it just grew from there um as social media kind of like is sprouted up just like during my time frame um I just saw that as a canvas to start putting some of those those pieces of work filming my kids or you know making addresses to um, my friends or you know talking about things that I thought were interesting and drawing attention to it you know Instagram stories right now has my attention like you would not believe man um I just like the idea of how, how do I tell a story in 15 seconds that keeps somebody engaged or how do I section this off? So the tinkering has not stopped and I, I doubt it will because there's just too much fun technology out there. I love that. So, okay, so you went from Los Angeles, you went to LA uh, um, and then you're deployed in the military and while you're in the military, uh, just to show people what you're doing, keep in touch, stay connected, you started to start diving into media and a little bit of, uh, you know, video on yourself and editing and all these things. When did you start to realize that like, this wasn't just maybe per se a hobby. This was something where I wanted to, to like, in addition to your career, which, you know, you have a full military career. This is something I want to invest my time and really get better at, you know, and, and really hone at. That's it. Uh, I realized I made it last week when you told me I could be a guest on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, you know what? This, Hey, I'm about to go full-time media, man. Yeah. You know, I'm on a positive filter podcast, man. I'm, I'm good. It's only up. It's only going to keep going up from here, man. So now um, I think um, the, to answer that question, man, um, something like, yeah, the military is typically not a type of environment where, uh, creative people you expect to see creative people but it's mm -hmm. wild because um you, you you see a ton of creative people you you every, we all look the same we're all wearing uniforms that look alike right so you just make assumptions that dude is just like me he does the same things i do and you mm -hmm. see people out of the uniform look completely different or you know you, you hang out with your buddies you do some karaoke and then the person you out there with got pipes you like dang, I didn't know you could sing. And then that becomes uh, becomes a thing. So we're really analytical by the book and it kind of forces you to use a different part of your brain. So I think that people who are creative types really want to get away from that and just express themselves in some kind of way. So you pour all of your personality into your art. I pour more personality into, you know, my photography and videography and media than maybe, you know, the average person will pour into their clothes because I don't really think about my clothes. I'm wearing a uniform most of the time. And when I come home, I want to throw some T-shirts, or jeans, an alpha hoodie and call it good, you know. <laughs> so, yes. but hey, I want to take a photo shoot. So, hey, time to go shopping. Let's go get some clothes. Let's do a photo shoot of myself. Hey, let me, you know, set my wife up in some kind of way that would be interesting to take a picture of. And it just goes from there. I love that because, you know, I was about to say, like, I definitely love the like, hidden karaoke star like 
you definitely realize that like uniformity is what the military is about. But like uh, being me, I'm a military brat. And so I know the real world behind uniform. My dad's military, you know, and yeah. all that stuff. And you spoke to that where a lot of people may have that nine to five wearing a uniform, but at the end of the day, they're individual, right? Like, yeah. you know, and I think that you just spoke to it. Like you wear your nine to five, but then when it's time to take that, that uniform off, you found an outlet to express yourself creatively. Yeah. Um, when did you start saying, okay, uh, first of all, for the listeners, I'm going to say you, my pro fight, obviously you've been in the fraternity longer. When did you start lending your skills of being creative to the fraternity oh, and man. that creative space? Oh, that's a that's a dope question. I would say uh, before I even joined the fraternity, uh, being at Howard University, um, I had some good friends who were alphas uh, down at Howard University um on the you know on the beta line uh 2007 uh no line 2008 2009 but uh shot some uh videos for step show actually organized a good portion of the media for those dudes man and uh that went ham they ended up winning the step show maxed out every uh category and then from that point forward at howard man people started taking like the video and audio game like super hype a mega mix series um at least that's the way i see it um could have been dope before that but i know we won that year so so um, I was I was like, man, I, I really like this. And then, you know, after the step show, I got to see what those those bros were doing out in the community. And I was like, man, these are multifaceted dudes, not just stepping and wearing letters. They actually are, you know, doing some community service. And so I kind of led some media assistance to some of the community service. Um, and oddly, I started to develop a reputation around campus as like a the video guy. Um, yes. So some other organizations approached me as uh they were like hey man if you could make our step show video this year you'll walk across the line we won't we won't talk about what organizations that was but uh, um kind of pushed me <laughs> kind of pushed me away from it i was like man I, i'm a military dude man i ain't never appreciated nothing i didn't have to earn um but back to your point uh uh, from day one, um, tried to get down at, at Howard and, you know, being in the military, that creates a whole bunch of different complications. Um, well, by the time I got to the, I, the decision to make the grad chapter, which, again, is another silly story. I'm in flight school trying to learn how to fly airplanes. And I got this bright idea while I'm in flight school with a high washout rate. This is also when I'm going to try to cross alpha. I'm going to try <laughs> to finish my alpha process. Uh, I love it. Hey, can I just really interrupt? Uh, I think that it, it doesn't happen when you want it. And it probably is not the best circumstance. They always say it's never. So shout out. This is a random in plug. Shout out to my wife for putting up with me for doing it while she was pregnant with my second son. Oh. Shout out to her. Uh, yeah. But I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. you definitely. It, you want to do it. You, you're very determined. So we did it. So no matter. Yeah. We, we both in. But go ahead with that. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was. Direction. I was just in that place at that point. I was like from from I made the decision. I literally walked in there with the idea that I'm going to join this organization. They were like, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the next. Ed I'm going to be the editor of Sphinx one day. You know, I'm going to bring Alpha into the 21st century. That has been my goal since walking in, in the door. Um, it's kind of been like on the calling card that one day somebody's going to look at something that Alpha has done in a technology realm and think, wow, those guys really turned the corner and led the way. And I want to be a part of that committee, that team in some way, shape or form. I want to pull the rope on that one. So from day one, I've been trying to, you know, lend my skills. Um, and uh, honestly, I'm trying to reduce my level of responsibility in the organization so that I can just focus on those areas of, of practice. I love it. So so you came in with the mindset, uh, which is not very, I mean, it is organized. Like, you know, they say, what can you do? Uh, uh, for the fraternity, right? And you're like, okay, I know what I can do because I brought these skill sets. Uh, honestly, I'll give you mad shout out because I really didn't, when they asked me that question, I was more like, uh, I'm good at talking to people. <laughs> I got a podcast. <laughs> so, you know, like you got a little bit more clear vision. But so you knew that you brought a set level of skills. Um, and I think that's kind of what we, we, we vibed about and talked about is one of the things that we're, we're learning is that whether it's the military, whether it's the fraternity, is being placed in an organization that utilizes your strengths. And one, with that organization, is like finding your lane. And so one of the things I want to ask you is like, like with that, like you got all these skills, how do you really determine whether when you're 
representing whether the military or representing uh, alpha or representing something else. Whereas like you're still enhancing yourself and you're not losing yourself in a grand organization. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. At the end of the day, you're still, regardless of letters or the uniform you're wearing, you're Frank. And you're Frank that's growing your media skills for you, not just growing your media skills because of alpha, not just growing your, uh, your skills for the military or whatever. You're growing those skills because you want to get better. How, how do you determine that? So two ways I probably would answer that question. Um, overarching idea, which may sound weird at first, is I'm, I'm always trying to fail forward. Um, and you've heard you've heard other, you know, big people communicate that concept. But for me, what that means is um, I like to look for things that I'm mostly uncomfortable doing, but are still in my wheelhouse. So at work, guys know me as the photo guy. They definitely know that anything involving a camera, guys are like, hey, uh, Siri, can you do this? Hey, Siri, can you do that? If it's something I'm like, hey, this is real simple. Anybody can do it. I will partner with someone and train that person so I can just lend them some assistance. There's no real benefit in, in that way. It's a selfish way to do it, but I'm like, hey, I'll help you gain the skill. So there's two of us. But then there's those tasks that people are like, they ask you to do and you're like, man, that might be more than I can, I can do. That might be more than I can pull off. Um, and those are the ones I'm like, all right, dog, time to fail forward. Like I, 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 I'm a procrastinator sometimes, man. But when you got those big deadlines, man, those juices get flowing and you really try to push hard to, uh, to accomplish whatever the, the goal is. Um, and, and I know my reputation, whether it's alpha or in the military is on the line, you know, cause there's already the buzz. Hey, that's the camera guy. That's the video mm-hmm. guy. That's the media guy. Um, you know, my call sign in the military is Siri, oddly enough. Um, probably a topic for another um, podcast, but oh, like Siri, like the phone, like the phone, yeah. Siri, All military like, aviators have call they're, signs. They're like man. Siri, like they know that you're going to take care of business. Yeah, I could literally. I know we're uh, viewers at home probably aren't paying attention. We're doing a little video. I could go to the back of my office. You look at those plaques that are right there in the back of my office. They actually say Siri. Yeah, that's my call sign. All my orders and everything. So that's a known thing. But it comes from um, much more than being a tech dude. But you, you're a tech guy, and your call sign is Siri. Come on, your reputation then becomes you know, they associate that. So um, failing forward in that regard, you know, people have high expectations. They're like, hey, okay, this dude named Siri is the tech dude. Okay, this dude is about to uh, do, I think we, uh, due to COVID, we had to do a a ball. We had to do a whole ball online. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is for, I think our community is is just north of 2,500 people, you know, high ranking officials up and down to, you know, a a three star uh, that's out there watching this presentation. And uh, they're like, hey, who can handle this? Who can knock this out? And I had an opportunity to play a large part in that. That's failing forward for me. I've never done anything like that before where I'm trying to plan something from beginning to end. But the fear kind of pushed me. And, and now that instilled the confidence that I could probably take on a, a you know, a, a bigger task. I love and that. turn around. Yeah. So, like, so they, I'm sorry to cut you off. But, but like you're saying, like, Syria has got the answers and you'll figure out the answer. And one, you take on new ventures. Um, so what I'm hearing, though, is that people literally are like, yo, we're going to try something, experiment. I call you, you, right, you got a new nickname with me. you the mad scientist. So <laughs> with that mad scientist, obviously, you fell forward, but you didn't fail forward in a major event the first time. So talk about that prototype. Like, talk about, like, you know, leading up to that major event, you, like, try a bunch of different things and tinker until, like, the, the magic show. Tinker with a bunch of magic tricks. How do, how do you how do you go about that? Uh, give myself enough time, man. Like just recognize that it's not going to work out right the first time, man. It's not. Uh, we uh, recently, chapter wise, we were trying to do a community service event during COVID again, where we allowed candidates to get in front of their constituents in the areas that we serve. Right, and that's a pretty broad uh, ask. And we had congressmen, we had senators. It was a pretty big uh, show. And my intent was to try to use a program called OBS to do it. Um, Because I was like, oh, I'm going to have graphics here. It's going to be awesome. It's going to look like a CNN news broadcast. I could bring guests on, blah, blah, blah. What I didn't take into consideration is that the computers that I own, they weren't like super powered NASA computers, man, to do the stuff I was thinking about. It wasn't a limitation of my creativity or even my ability. It was just like the, the machine can't handle that much video going through it at one time. And so had I waited to the last minute to like knock that out, 
I mean, I, I had set it up. I had, the, I was going to show the chapter, everything, bring like 10 people on. It started failing from like the fifth person joining in there. And we had to, to, to adjust. And uh, I'm saying we're like two weeks out from the actual presentation. We had to shift from OBS, which has all the creativity you can imagine over to uh, StreamYard, um, which is, you know, it, it, you can do some stuff with it, but I had to learn a new system and then figure out how to still give it that custom feel so it doesn't look like everybody else's. And, you know, to me, from my perspective, it was a failure. From my perspective, I was like, dang, this is what I wanted to achieve and I didn't accomplish it. From everyone on the outside looking at it, it was a success because they're like, wow, we've never seen anything like that before. And so that that's more that fail forward idea. Sometimes we have these visions in our own mind of what we want to accomplish. And, you know, we've already exceeded greatness in most other people's eyes. But in our own eyes, we're like, this, this is the goal and I got to get there. And, and we'll use that as an excuse to not, you know, be proud of ourselves in that success. I love that. One is, a, there's two things why I love that. One is I love that we're talking about intrinsic motivation and validation of success and like, you know, like, you you gave me a shout out earlier and I was like uh like it's sometimes it's external like you don't feel it yourself until someone else externally validates you and you gotta work on that. But two is that um I think that there's also uh that mindset that we're not settled. We're not settled in our uh, our accomplishments or we're not settled in anything. We're always itching to be better, itching to be greater. Um and I, I, I always, I did buy with you about that earlier. So one of the questions I have though, is that as you progress in your skill, have you been able to reflect, especially with large organizations, going back from those step shows, I'm going to say it was a DVD or a VHS to now, <laughs> are you able to like really see the growth? And for someone else, like speaking to yourself, um, like speaking to yourself or speaking to someone else getting creative, like how do you just kind of keep up? How, how do you keep up and go back to those archives where we're definitely not using the same stuff to be creative that we were back in the day? Yeah, um, actually, uh, from time to time, because I'm sorry, man, that step show from Howard, man, in my mind, that was like the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. I, you know, I'll talk to, to people and kind of show them that, how I came to Alpha and stuff like that. And even in looking at the video, I see so many mistakes. I see so many things where I'm like, man, I could have did that better. Um, and it was a hot show. It was a hot show. Like we had fog and all kind of craziness going on. I had sound effects and lights going off. Sound like a helicopter was about to land on the building. People screaming in the stadium. It was it was a Super Bowl for me. But I can go through there and I look and I, I can hear like the mistakes I made with the audio, how like it's clipping the speakers and in, in the spot because I wasn't paying attention to levels. And I could see some of the graphic art that I had did like the motion graphics was just trash, man. But uh, people loved it because nobody was doing that kind of stuff. Um, and then the, to go back to um, something, you know, more recent that I, that I put out to the point that it gets the attention of the Lieutenant governor, like, Hey, that looks good. You know, that growth, it's those moments where you're kind of like, man, I, I just think I'm boring and average, you know, and this person thinks this is some great work. And it's not until you go back and see some of that past work and compare it to what you're doing right now that you can start to appreciate. You'll spend most of your time going, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Go back and look at where you started. Go back and look at the beginning work and you'd be like, man, we've come a long way, you know? So. I love that. So funny thing is I'm going to say that to you. It's like, now that we can say that, how do we, how me and you both of us, we're, we're on this podcast together. How do we both, do you need like an accountability buddy? But how do we, how do we infuse that we, there's a balance, right? We're trying to fine tune that balance of being better, better, better every day, but also not the end of the day, like still celebrate that we're getting better. Cause like you, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it to the listener. This was, um, I posted on Facebook a while ago. It was like, uh, it was Frank right here that told me, go ahead and listen to your first episode and listen to it and see where it was. And I was like, all right, I'll listen to it. And I'm going to give you mad shout out that that joke juiced me up because I was like, I did not imagine how many times I said, um, or stuttered, how many times I was guiding myself. Like, maybe I'll stick with this podcast. Like maybe, and I was like three years later and I was like, I think that's an exercise. And I'm, I'm going to challenge all people that are creative to like, if you ever create, if you make videos or make music or or do anything, like 
I would challenge you to go back and listen to your first ever or watch or look at your first ever just randomly. Go back in the archive and you would be surprised if you really cared about something. It's like almost like a tangible, like tangible testament to that. So I don't know. What made you say that to me? I'm going on tangent. What made you say that to me to do that? Um, one, I had did it. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I had did it. Uh, but no, um, ah, I, I'm not trying to get long winded, man. But can I no, just get long with it? Get along right. with it. All right. This is kind of off topic, but I'm gonna bring it back around. All yeah. right. Uh, all right. So in some communities, particularly our own, uh, you come across people who are the finna people. You know, I'm finna do this. I'm finna do that. I'm going to do this. I'm thinking about doing this. We about to do this. We about to do that. Um, and I'm sure they exist in every community, but I'm just speaking to what I'm, I'm aware of, you know, um, and you, as, as I'm getting older, I'm noticing that the number of people who are actually doing things versus the people who are talking about what they're about to do, there is, man, there's just, the cream is like rising to the top. It's like they're, they're, the, the numbers of people who are doing things is much, much smaller. Okay. So set that in your mind. Right. And here I am, you know, when you first started the podcast, um, somehow we connected and it, it wasn't, it wasn't through, it, it was, Maybe through Alpha, but somehow we yeah, connected. Yeah, because you you celebrated me on the back of past stuff. Yeah, uh, I think I think you shared one of my promotions or something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know, but you, you I was looking it. for content. I was looking for content. Yeah, I was like, I, I'm not gonna share something I'm not genuinely interested in because yeah. nobody's gonna read it. And then that caught my attention. I was like, oh man, that's that's pretty dope. This is this is awesome. This guy is dope. So I go through and I listen to your podcast, and then I look at the number of podcasts you have in there, and immediately you went from a finna dude to a I'm doing it dude because it, it wasn't like oh, here's another analogy I'm sorry I'm speaking analogies right so I'm doing it dude is the dude who uh is who takes you to Chuck E. Cheese right and he shows you um, his I'm doing it pit that's that ball pit right it's got blue balls green balls yellow balls a whole bunch when you was a little kid remember how excited I used to get and you would just take a big leap of faith and just just jump on in that ball pit like bow and it's just it throw the balls around and just hang out in there oh man Chuck E. Cheese is the greatest place on the face of the planet um, you swimming around like Scrooge McDuck. The finna dude is the dude that has like one or two balls in that big old pit and expects you to jump around there and be ex happy with his accomplishments. I can only get so excited when I can when I can look around me and I go, there's a lot more here for me to explore than what you told me about when you when you under promise and overproduce. You know, I jump I jump in this this pit of creativity and there's a lot of stuff in here for me to interact with. The finna people will have one or two things and they expect you to celebrate the one or two things. Oh, look, it's a green one. It's a blue one. It's a yellow one. You got all the colors. Great. No, fill this thing up. And, and you existed. That was Chuck E. Cheese, man. I looked around and there was a lot of stuff for me to interact with a lot of different topics. You know, some of them I was like, OK, I don't know anything about that. Let me click it. Another one's like, oh, this is my thing. Let me listen to it. Before I knew it, I had spent like four hours with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's um the reason I would say something like that to you is because that felt like the journey that I was on, you know, and as I'm skipping around, I, I'm listening. I'm going, wow, that audio sounds better. Oh, he sounds a little bit more confident. And I was like, that's the growth. Um, I did it. And I was like, man, that's powerful. That motivated me. And I thought maybe giving that back to you would be some motivation. I love that. And, uh, one, as I appreciate that. And two, uh, I love Chuck E. Cheese. My kids love Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, three is I think that I think, as I said earlier, you know, I work with a lot of creative students at Mason. And so I'm going to definitely employ them. That's going to be one of my strategies uh, that I say to them is like, you know, when someone is beating themselves up, I, I definitely want them. To, that's going to be an exercise. Like, you, you know, it's like, crazy. It, it does. It works even better. If like with some every day. Think about this for the listeners at home. I know this is your show. I'm going to take it over for a second. Take it over. <laughs> take it over. For the listeners at home who's like, man, I'm not that creative. You know, I don't, I don't do photographs. I don't do podcasts. I'm not a mm -hmm. videographer. I'm not that. You may be like, what, what, where's my growth come from? Go back in time to your very, very first Facebook post. Yeah. Oh, I got to do that. I got to do that. Okay. I got to do that. I got to do back. that. Oh, Go man. back and look how confused you were at how this whole process worked, like how you interacted with the people on your oh, feet okay. or the things you wrote in there, the fact how long it took before you added your first picture. Think about that. Go back to that and then compare that to the last post that you did and, and, and think about the speed it took for you to figure out the exact right thing to say the first five or six times you were on Facebook. 
But like right now, you could be like, oh, a squirrel. And that's your post. It's, it's, it's that you'll post that. The growth is definitely there, you know? Natural growth. Like at, at, <laughs> at bare minimum, people have exponential growth, but like we all, at some form or fashion, from crawling to walking, we all yeah. grow. I'm going to do that challenge, man. We're going to call it my first ever Facebook challenge. Yeah. I'm going to tag you on that. Because I remember when Facebook, and this is a tangent too, when Facebook was said, you had to say is, like Philip is, and it was always an is statement. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. You're doing something. It's happy. At, at, yeah, Philip is happy. Yeah. <laughs> I bet mine are probably pretty embarrassing in regards to social media content, but as technology grows, we grew with it, but it also got more skill. Um, I love that. Like, dang, man, you dropping gems. <laughs> Because I think a lot of people would be embarrassed about their first Facebook post. So we're talking about being creative. We're talking about first ever. We're talking about growth. We're all over the map, but we're, we're at the core of it is expressing ourselves creatively, using new skills. Now, with that being said, creativity is going to ever change, right? Like uh, you taught me new things, StreamYard. Skills are uh, not skills, but actual technology is growing. Uh, from you doing that first or that step show at Howard on a VHS camera to now. So how do you, you particularly, and then how would you suggest someone else that wants to be creative in videos, audio, photos, all that? How do you stay ahead of the game and keep up? You know, because that that is definitely something that's going to benefit you to keep up. Uh, creativity is ever changing. Technology is ever changing. So how do you keep up with that? that that growing technology for me um I, I i feel like knowing what to keep up with and what not to keep up with uh some people mm -hmm. think creativity is being inspired by everything you see and replicating it like mm -hmm. that's a type of creativity but sometimes you just gotta like andre 3000 your way out of a situation man sometimes you just gotta you gotta go look i'm uh, i'm there's plenty of influences out there but i just want to play in my own world and do something that is not being done before i just want to do what feels comfortable i want to do what feels right you know i want to figure that thing out and 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 believe it or not you'll get so i believe i believe that and speaking to myself um i believe that there's going to come a point where i'm going to be so passionate about this journey that i'm on that it's going to matter to me more than being accepted by other people and it's unique how that time happens and people are like, he's ahead of his peers. Why? Because you took a path no one else took. You didn't take the path that was traveled by everybody else. You were like, I I want to experiment with sepia photos to, to the cows come home. Everyone's on black and white right now. Or, you know, um, everybody's doing vertical video. I want to do horizontal video or I'll, I'll go back to square video and see how I can make that happen, you know. Um, just experimenting and finding a passion that you 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 are so passionate about that you you know how to do that thing better than anybody else knows how to do it technology is a tool to get you there you know okay. like oh sad here's another example we are zoomed out right now in covid well, you know what i'm saying as we're on zoom right as now we're on zoom, <laughs> as we're on zoom right as we're on zoom like we're zoomed out but we are zoomed out right now as far as COVID is concerned. But think about it. Think about the events you see uh, in, in, in the social world right now. Everybody gives a Zoom passcode, a key. We all sit on the screen staring at each other and we're looking at eight different cameras and the viewer is like, okay, I've seen this before. I don't think I care anymore. That tool, that technology tool offers so much more that we're just not tapping into, right? Um, I, I said this, uh, I communicated this to my chapter um, today. I was like, there's so much more to this tool that we're not even tapping into. And uh, that's why my audio was all jacked up earlier because um, I still had those settings. And they, uh, by the time we got through with the presentation, we had, I'd gotten a, how in the world did you do this? Like, how has this even come together? I didn't spend any money. I just spent maybe an hour or two on YouTube just trying to figure out creative ways to use Zoom. How are people using it differently? And then came up with my own idea. Hey, how have we thought about this for an event? You know, um, uh, people do happy hours, right? We got the DJ, the guy who wants to DJ uh, on Instagram because, you know, they see D-Nice doing. You got the 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 happy hour in Zoom that everyone wants to do it. They got still 18 different talking heads. But, you know, Zoom is a great product. Why why isn't there a game night? Why, why isn't somebody taking the screen, taking control of the screen and playing Family Feud? Why isn't someone, you know, able to do that? It's a perfectly good platform to do something like that or, or 
you know, pay the extra money to, to get the webinar and, and host Jeopardy amongst, you know, some high ranking colleagues and, you know, take that to social media to have a conversation about it. Those are uses of Zoom that I personally haven't seen, but they're fully capable, um, fully capable of, of being done. A, a bingo. Come on now. Bingo. <laughs> could be could be done on a platform so it's sometimes it's not about staying on top of technology it's just using the old technology in new ways yeah, um, like someone like i was thinking about like you know you said using old technology in new ways but you know somewhere out there someone the polaroid camera and the cool stuff with the polaroid it's yeah. not the, it's not the capstone of the, of the actual technology it's like like how do you how do you push these instruments to their limits? But also it's like, you know, somewhere out there, someone like took a picture laying on their back, and, you know, yeah. different angles and yep. lay, let me lay on my back and take a picture upward or, you know, but it's the same camera. So I love that yep. idea. I love that. Like you push it, like, why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? Why don't we try this? You know, like, and tinker, but it's still the same thing. Yep. And it's crazy. I didn't think about that. But that takes time though. It does. That's that's the one card. We we look at time wild though. We look at we look at time crazy. Like we look at time wrong and something. I do. I know I do. So yeah. I I'm the quickest person to tell you I don't have time for that. Right. I'll tell you, yeah. no, nah, I don't think I really have time for that. But then my candy crush score is dope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I'm doing decent in candy crush, like a uh, video game. Cyberpunk just came out. You know, that's, I, I, I can sit there and tell you about how that opening sequence went. The miles Morales. I can tell you how that sequence went. You know, um, it, we, we decide how we're going to use time. And there's just, sometimes you could take some things out to create time for other things. You know, um, I was telling my daughter the other day, I said, um, my, my daughter, I really wanted her, I, I'm not saying that she needs to go vocational, but I'd be okay with that because there are some great opportunities in the vocational realm. But I was saying to my daughter, she was like, dad, I want to get a job at the roller skating rink. And I was like, sorry, babe, I'm, I'm not the conventional parent. I'm like, if you want to get a job at the roller skating rink, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to be disappointed. She goes, why? I was like, you've been doing some great job with those nails that you've been painting. She's like, yeah, but I don't think I want to be a nail tech. I was like, great, you don't have to be a nail tech, but we can do some simple math. You can assume what you'd make at the roller skating rink. You could get your cleanliness up. You can get your skills up. You can build an Instagram account. You can start showing your nails off and somebody pay you $30, $40 to do their nails. I was like, how many people do you think it would take for you to do uh, to to pull off $300? And she was like, no, 10 people at $30. Okay, minus your supplies and, and things. Let's go ahead and just double that. Let's say you need to get 20 people, you know, and, and you know, you put some money away. You, you'd, you'd have about $300, right? 20 people in two weeks. I was like, how long, how much time would that take for you to do 20 people's nails? She says about an hour each person. So 20 hours in two weeks, 10 hours a week. And you could make north of four, uh, north of $400, even after paying taxes and paying for your supplies. I said, let's do the math on what that salary is that they're offering you at the roller skating rink. How do we get to $400? And we couldn't do it in a month. And so it was, it was the idea of showing her that. She's like, well, dad, I don't know if I have time to learn how, how to get really good. And I said, okay, well, we have to, how do, how do I put it to her? I said, because this is, this is the gym I was trying to drop. Sorry about that. Um, there you go. Dad gyms. I love it. <laughs> this is the gym. I, oh, I, 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 I communicated to her that we need to spend more time in this world creating than consuming. Okay. Okay. I was like, we need to spend more time creating than consuming. And I was like, if you were going to spend that time watching TV or spend that time listening uh, to, to, to just music without doing anything else or on the phone talking to friends, that's consuming. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a time for it. But imagine if you spent more time. Let's imagine if every day you said, I'm going to take, I'm going to break my nails down and, and I'm going to do a new set of nails every day. At the end of the mm -hmm. month, you'd have 30 nails. And that's that Chuck E. Cheese analogy again. After one yeah. month, there's 30, there's 30 balls in the pit. After two months, there's 60 balls in the pit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the year, there's 365 balls in the pit. You're a 16 year old with 365 sets of customized nails on your Instagram account. Who in their right mind when you approach them and say, hey, I want to do your nails and I'll charge you $40 to do it. Man, nails are so much more expensive than $40. They see, they see the work, they see what you've been able to do. They're gonna let you do it. 
Yeah. I was about to say, I love that mindset. I love the time mindset. I love, you know, the value of time. We're both very busy parents. Uh, we, we uh, squeeze in our create creative endeavors, like endeavors late night, look at me doing this podcast at night. <laughs> um, but I think I do, I, I do a lot of things, what I call is like stacking, right? Like, like um, if I got task, I'm gonna try to do two at the same time. I know someone's gonna get out there and say like, you know, multitasking is not a real thing. And, but that, but I, I definitely value that. Like if I can listen and learn and still do something, like I'm definitely gonna grow at the same time. So maybe you kind of spoke to it. You, you, you broke that down to your daughter about learning a new skill. How do you balance learning something new creatively and still doing your nine to five? Because I know uh, even if you're called Siri at your job, um, your job is not the photo guy. Your job is something else. You're adding creativity and learning that. So how do you balance that? How do you learn that um, in addition to your nine to five? How do you make time for it? If I'm gonna sit here on this podcast and act like I figured that out, man, I'm lying to everybody, yo. <laughs> everybody, yo, this dude, man. man, come on, man. He's about to fake it like he does. That's serious, dude. He lied, man. He don't tell the truth. I know that. Uh, but if I was to say some tools that I use that help me stay somewhat balanced, man, uh, being creative, man, like you're creative, your brain is always going 18 different, different, different directions, man. Yeah. And there's times where, you know, I need to be focused and I'm, I'm off wondering why isn't this done differently? Wait, I need to focus right now, you know? Um, but I, if anything, um, I, I happen to occupy a place where I can, I can delegate tasks. And, and, and honestly, it's expected of me to delegate a lot of tasks. Um, I have, I've had to dedicate time to doodling in that space, if that makes mm-hmm. sense, of tinkering yeah. in that space, like understanding how to get better at delegating. Like, hey, what should I delegate? What shouldn't I delegate? Um, and that's, that's a, that's, man, that's huge. And then automation, um, is, is another big, uh, a big thing you were talking about stacking, trying to do two and three, um, tasks. Yeah. Uh, I have to do the same thing. I may want to blow my Instagram up. Um, something I'm wrestling with now because I've never really taken it serious. You know, when I look at guys who have like 4,000, 5,000 followers and I'm like, I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty dope. You know, you, 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 you're validated by those number of followers, but I'm like, my work is better than yours, man. Like, what's up? What, why ain't y'all loving my stuff? But I'm not, I'm not putting it out. Um, so I got to automate some of that stuff. So, you know, mm-hmm. like you were talking about stacking, I need to go out and shoot. And then after shooting, I need to schedule posts with some sort of automation process to get that information out there. And then that's the way that, that I would end up growing. So automating, delegating is um, one piece. And then eat your vegetables, man. Um, that last piece of eating your vegetables is, as a little kid, remember, you didn't really want to eat the broccoli. You don't want to eat all that stuff. You, but so some kids were just like, they cry and whine and just never do it. And then they'd have this like wild vitamin deficiency. And, and mm-hmm. then you'd have to pay like a dollar a day to keep them fed or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it works. Uh, but the point is, um, uh, it's, then there was the kids who were like, man, I hate these vegetables. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shove them all in my mouth. I'm going to chew them up and I'm going to swallow them. And I'm going to go on about my life. Right. Get it I done. feel like I've always been that kid. <laughs> Get it over with. Get yeah. it over with. Yeah. I like that. I always felt like I was that kid. Yeah. It was like, man, I hate these vegetables as much as you do. I'm going to eat. I'm going to put all these in my mouth. I'm going to try to swallow them. And then since mom is happy that they're not on my plate anymore, I'm going to go in the bathroom and vomit them or do whatever I got to do to get rid of these vegetables. But yeah. just get it done. And so in life, there's tasks at work. There's tasks in my creative endeavors. There's tasks in alpha I don't want to do. And I try to put those vegetables first. I try to try to go, I don't want to do this. So I'm going to focus on getting this done, knock it out. And then knowing that desserts on the horizon, I'm, I got a motivator dragging me through that task. So balance, yeah. I can't give you that answer, but those are some tools that I use to keep me, keep me kind of going in the right direction. Yeah. I like that too. I was about to say, like, I try to knock out stuff I don't want to do. I definitely stack a lot, you know, like, um, you know, stacking is things like where you do something you really don't like, like to do, but you do something you like at the same time. For instance, like, dang, I don't want to clean out this and vacuum this car. It sucks. I don't want to vacuum this car. But stacking wise is if I'm going to vacuum this car, I'm going to listen to a podcast I like. Like I'm going to do yeah. something I like and do it at the same time so that I'm benefiting doing this whack ass, you know, labor, but I'm yeah. learning at the same time. It's overlapping. Yeah. And so I try to do that a lot. I try to stack a lot. Um, yeah. And I heard about that about time and because time is limited, but um, I definitely – listen and listen to other people. Um, and then in regards to positive, uh, not positive, but in creativity and learning, I do exactly what you say. Like if I'm going to 
knock out stuff so I have a little bit of space to to learn things that I want to learn, which is you know, you know getting better at podcasting, getting the mic, all those things. But I have to knock out my nine to five first before I do that. One of the things I wanted to talk about that is really interesting or whatever for this podcast is that we're both sometimes stifled in regards to the structure of organizations, you know, uh, the brand, the brand of organizations, um, you know, and I'm not going to say, but the brand of Alpha, or the brand of our organization, the brand of Mason, there's, there's certain things that lend us to that, you know, if we're going to be creative, but we have to be creative in, in regards to the confines of this space, because like, I can't say, you know, the brand of Alpha, I could be creative, but I can't say purple, right? That's not our, you know. Oh, you trying to get punched in the mouth? No, yeah. exactly, right? Like, <laughs> like there's a certain, there's a certain pr- parameter to the brand. So how do we express ourselves creatively, but stay still stay in the confines of established brands and the, the message and the goals of someone else? That makes sense. Um, I think for me, uh, right now, uh, an example of that is, uh, the branding guy that just came out, okay. right? That branding guy is dope. Uh, I love the fact that we put the time, the effort into the branding guy for a fraternity, right? What the brand looks like. How do you represent the brand? What fonts, what colors, the, all yes. that stuff. The I've seen that branding guy. Yes. I've yeah, seen I, it. I, I think that's dope. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's like it's like it's like it's like you know me we, me and you are uh we are non-traditionalist rebels but we also definitely respect i respect and i know you respect the history the the tradition oh yeah it's like how do you be an anti-traditionalist and say you know ask questions why 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 but at the same time we respect i respect the traditions yeah. I respect the way it is. So how do we balance that with our creative brains? I'm I'm okay being I'm I'm okay being told no. Like I'm I'm I, it does not bother me. Like I, I'm gonna tell you I hate it. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna comply, right? <laughs> like you just gotta get this that's stupid, you know, but I'm still gonna you know do the thing. But um the how do how do I that as an as the example for the branding guide is like a lot of people look at that as like the biggest roadblock. I can't do anything. I'm just going to stop or I'm just going to ignore it. Mm. Right. And we were talking about earlier, take this old technology and find a new way to use it. So the branding guide, no matter how detailed it wants to be in this particular example is not going to cover every single possible case. So how can I create something that's exciting, something that's new, something that's eye catching and remain inside that branding guide. And when you do, you're like, man, you know, that that's the creative, that's the finding, finding a creative pocket in the space in which you exist. How can I put my stank on this thing that I'm doing? You know? Um, so I got to use these colors. I got to use these fonts, but Hey, it doesn't say anything about depth. Maybe I, instead of making this a static graph graphic, I'm going to go ahead and use motion graphics. There's no section in that branding guide about motion graphics. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. You know, um, I can incorporate video. I can, you know, I can pull animation, you know, those types of things take this old tech or take this old this other tool and find new ways to use it um that's just that's fun to me that that piece of it just finding a pocket in which you can play where you can still remain you know creative flying a plane there's stuff you do the same way every single time but there there are always pockets where you can find little pieces of of creativity okay so this plane needs to be at this altitude because the controller told me to be at this altitude. But guess what? I still get to call into ATC and give them a greeting, you know, and give them my call sign and ask for what wants me to go. Do I just give them my tail number and ask for a heading? Or do I say, hey, good morning or good afternoon or happy new year. Can I be excited when I talk to the dude, you know, listen for the reaction. So just find little pockets you can exist, exist in and still maintain your interest. I love it. I was like, it's basically the human beings are going to find a way. And also we find loopholes. That's I love wild, that. Right? I yeah. love that. I love that. Uh, so definitely, uh, if you're using the alpha branding guide, do not use purple. <laughs> 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 that was the lesson that we found a roundabout way. <laughs> Please yeah. use the right colors. <laughs> use purple, but learn how to duck. That that might be <laughs> <laughs> that might be the better lesson. I love it. I love it. And so I got one more question before we our last segment. What in regards to your creativity and using technology, what is something particularly for 2011 or just the future of technology, what is something that excites you? 
Oh man, that um, I, I think uh, I want to believe that like there was a time where people would go to like the little expos, like the ones they show at Disney Disneyland, and like man, this is the future. And you'd go to this expo to get excited about the things to come uh, in the future. The thing I'm excited about is like the right now has so much tech and so much crazy stuff and so much access that I don't even have to dream about the future. That's a little overwhelming. There's just stuff around us right now. That's super, super exciting. Um, uh, like imagine this, this podcast, right? This podcast is not only going to be broadcast to God knows how many people, thousands of people but there's a possibility uh, thousands give me credit 200 (laughs) i love how you're so nice to me but i'm saying i'm okay okay see see that's you thinking about the now that's you in that old school (laughs) disneyland mentality you looking at the numbers right right now i'm saying that podcast is gonna be there for a while bro you know what i'm saying it's gonna be there for a while And, 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 and 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 somebody's gonna go back through your entire archive it's gonna be listened to by thousands upon thousands of people it's not live on the airways gone and done it's going people are going to hear it and have access to it instantly um at the at the tip of their fingers like the future right now is like wild like i can take a photo and and frame it in such a way that you know someone goes wow that's a really interesting thing i'd like to i'd like to pay you three thousand dollars for it i, I can't imagine someone paying me three thousand dollars for something i just went okay done um but that the the future like around us right now is is pretty pretty exciting man you have your own tv station in your own house you know i mean you got your own broadcast radio station in your house i got a, a video studio just back there you know on the camera where you know i can address the entire you know state of virginia at a at a moment's notice you know so that i just think that's the the right now is too interesting i'm i'm excited about just our ability to connect, our ability to be creative, our ability to, to, to be our true selves, you know? Well, one, I love that too. And maybe, right, like maybe if you go in the future 15 years, maybe this podcast will get a thousand listens. <laughs> you know, maybe no, I never know, but I definitely, I definitely feel that. So we're at the part of the show I call Shot for Shot. Uh, I mean, Okay. You get to ask me any random question. I get to ask nice. you any random question. I like random. Random is my thing. You want to go first? I'll go first. Oh, you go first. Let's see. I want to see how random. I don't want to violate any rules. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a habitual line stepper. So I don't, I don't want to get you kicked off the podcast circuit. Well, you know? I get kicked, okay. Uh, it's, oh, so you um, went to hell, right? Yes. I'm going to throw a wrench um, about the HB, uh, HBCU experience. Okay. Uh, you were in California. Yes. You went across the country yep. to Howard. What was unique about your Howard experience, and why do you think it was better for you to go to Howard uh, than stay in California, or particularly even uh, add another layer, go to a predominantly white institution like UCLA, where I started? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know, yeah. Um. So, okay, Uh, across the country, right, to Howard, what made me go there and what was unique about my experience. Um, Wow, man. Okay, so I thought being from L.A., living around a lot of black people, um, being from the hood, watching a lot of BET, I knew black people, right? You come across people, you say something a certain way, they respond a certain way, you're like, man, that's crazy. Black people are the same, you know. Uh, Going to Howard, oh, my gosh, man, there were so many different types of black people man it was it was scary and beautiful all at the exact same time man um i had a dude i'm gonna leave his name out of here but i had a dude who was just he just was can't get right and and maybe that's saying a lot because I'm, I'm coming from military right so to me you you got one chance to, to stumble and the second time you better figure it out right um this dude was just can't get right in the college environment and i was like dang i just felt sorry for him so i was like hey let me let me just to help you out let me give you some tips hey let me pull you along and we can study and, and all the other good stuff come to find out this dude is at howard because his he has family members very close family members that are royalty in another country you like what you know what i'm saying like you struggling writing sentences and you 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 are royalty like dang you were down to earth dude like you you did not meet any of my expectations for the position you occupy on this planet right um so that was a wild wild experience i was like dang i mean 
button down shirts. That's at the time Jay Z was doing with the button down type situation, rocking J's and jeans. You know, funny dude. That's how we connected. Just both having a sense of humor. And I'm like, th- that didn't make sense. So my experience at Howard was just completely just re re shocking me to how broad and how different our culture really is. Like, I can't say I know all black people because I don't. And I can't say, you know, we're all the same because we're different in so many different ways. Um, And lastly, I think this is kind of my plug for the HBCU kind of circuit is I enjoy going to Howard because uh, most of my time, whether it was in, I went to a school in East LA. So it's mostly Hispanic community. I look different everywhere I went um, from high school on like one of like six black people in my entire school, right? Look very different. Joined the Navy um, and then had some jobs on the enlisted side where I was like one of two black people in my entire division. Um, and then here I am getting picked up for this commissioning program to you know get ready to go fly planes where I know I'm gonna be one of only a few handful of black people to get into a classroom where everyone looks like me and not wonder if the reason that I am excelling is because I'm different, that someone is taking pity on me or, you know what, that's pretty good for a black guy. Like, it's not that. It's, hey, that's pretty good because you met the standard and exceeded it. So it, it did wonders for my, for my confidence going back into an environment where I look different. I was just like, hey, I'm good because I'm good, not because I look different. I love it. Shout out, shout out to Mara. Few uh, HBC experience when I went to Bowie State. Shout out to there for our transfer to JMU. But now that I go back into it, I'm glad I did start at Bowie State. And um, I do, I do feel that now. I wish, I wish I could have been put my mind, my 35 year old mind into that 18 year old. I definitely yep. would still transferred. I ain't gonna lie. I love JMU. I would have still transferred, but I would have appreciated Bowie a little bit more for what it was when I was there. I can uh, see it for that space that it was. That's crazy. All right, your my, turn. Okay, my shot. Okay. Uh, random. It's two o'clock in the morning, right? You're woken up because you have to go to the restroom really bad. I'm talking really, really, really bad. Really bad, right? And uh, you have a rustling uh, downstairs. You look over, your wife is uh, in the bed with you, and between you, all of your kids. So you know it's not your kids, you know it's not your wife. You got a big rustling downstairs, no pets. You got to use the bathroom really, really bad. What are you doing? Hitting the bathroom first or going to go figure out what this uh, surprising situation is? Why? That's your question? Yeah. I might go pee first. I don't care. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Like, okay, we're gonna I, let the enemy advance on your position before you defend your family. I'm gonna defend my family if I got to pee. You got a point. You got a point. That and also, like, uh, you know, um, I'm not a law, uh, and I'm gonna say this on the podcast. My wife is the boss of the house, whatever, and I'm not, allow, I'm not allowed to have firearms in my home. Mm. I lock it up because uh, I'd probably be like Billy Bob and shoot myself on accident. Gotcha. Um, so. Uh, I definitely have a lot of people on my roster. Uh, I have, I mean, maybe life will happen to me, but, you know, if the zombie apocalypse pops off. Right. I got about 10 brothers and 10 people that got firearms. At least I know I'll be safe. Okay. If I get out of my house. Yeah. If you so, can make it out. So with that exit strategy, if the zombie apocalypse is to happen today. Yes. I have to connect with at least, I got the people I got to connect with to, for my survival camp. Okay. Okay. And with that, I already know my role. My role in the zombie apocalypse would be that guy, you know, that person that um that connects the clans, you know, kind of the recruiter. Yeah. That'd be me. The, the broker, the information broker. Yeah, the one that goes out like, yo, go go out there and don't get killed, but be really nice and join our clan. That'd be me. Gotcha. Do we I, only get I, one question? We only get one question. You can get another one because that one was kind of like I was about to say I'm gonna pee. So give it me was a soft one. question. I just wanted to get to Softball. know if you, were, if, you were, if you were an honest guy or, you know what I'm saying, or if you were too be, proud to. I'd be and the rest of what happened in my family would probably get, you know, <laughs> done so, but, you know, whatever. You yeah, asked that yeah. question, man. I know you're honest. So um, my question is you have 30 seconds. You, they, we, we invented time travel. You have 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds with a version of yourself. How old are you? And what do you say in that 30 seconds? Hey, so it's like, well, gotta go. So I gotta, yep. can I, can I like, 
like if I knew I had a three, if I knew if you told me I had 30 seconds, I'd probably write out what I want to say. This is like me overthinking it, but I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I would write out what I had to say so I know I can fit as much as I could in the 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. You know, like write a little speech to myself. Yep. And I would write that speech to... Hey, there's two moments I really want to do. So I'm going to do two because I don't care. I'll break rules. One moment would be right, right after I got married. Like right after I pulled myself aside. Right after I said I do. Mm-hmm. And I will speak to myself and say, you know, uh, you're marrying your best friend. Please do this, that, and this. But just know that you're gonna have kids, and it's gonna be hard. <laughs> like, yeah. like some kind of like pep talk, you know? Yeah. Like, it's gonna that. be hard. That's a pep talk. No, I mean, I got the thirty <laughs> seconds. I didn't write. I, I didn't have my. I don't have my full thirty second speech out, man. <laughs> no. Hey, uh, you, you, you marrying your best friend. You're gonna have kids, and you're gonna hate your life. So, no, no, not right. hate. No, all right, bye. No, no. Gotta go back to the future. <laughs> no, it's gonna be like, hey, you're gonna marry your best friend, you're gonna have kids. And I was like, yo, make sure you spend time, make sure you do this, uh, make sure, like, within the five years before you have kids, do as much, do crazy stuff, yeah. do as much as you can. I definitely, I'm writing it out right now. So, it's, it's gonna be a bunch of, mo- it's gonna be like a full monologue, but just encouraging myself, but, but, you know, talking to myself now, and, and, and but also just being, reaffirm that this is this is probably the best i would say this is the best thing that's ever happened to your ass like honestly yeah you marrying your wife and the future you're building together is the best thing you're doing so con- congrats to you congrats dap myself i would dap myself up and i'll zoom out that's one and then another one would i'd be i would talk to myself uh right so before i got married i would talk to myself about uh right after I graduated college. Like I pulled myself to the side right after I graduated college. And I would say, like almost like a career counseling speech, I would say, you know, hey, you graduated, you really enjoyed JMU. Uh, Your first job is definitely not gonna be your last job. You're not gonna know exactly what you're gonna do. Just keep holding on to doing what you were doing that you did good at college, which is making friends and being nice and just, being goofy as hell and uh, being open to new things like you did in college because I was good at that. I randomly went to China and studied abroad. I randomly took classes that I liked. I would, so I would say always learn, continue to learn. But that's more than 30 seconds, so I'd have to write that real quick. So I'd read it to myself. But I'd pop up and say, hey, uh, you're good at connecting with people. Do things like you went to China and (laughs) (laughs) be open to new experiences and keep on trying and learn. Keep on learning. So those would be the two two moments. I love that question, but I'd have to jam pack it and I'd have to rehearse it so I can get the the most into my 30 seconds that I could get. Oh, man. That was a good question, man. That's that's right. Can I give you credit? That's probably one of the best questions I've gotten asked on the the, uh, Shot for Shot. Oh, man. One of the best. I don't know. I got like top five, but that definitely was one of the top Dang. five. Dang. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. I need that first question to soften you up to see what you're going to give well, me. Well, the first question was like, basically you're going to get murdered with your family because you <laughs> want to go pee first. I appreciate that. Whatever. Second one had yeah. me thinking a little bit. You, you got two people, man. You got the guy who always wants to look cool in front of everybody, man. This your podcast, man. So you got your listeners. Oh, no, man, I, so. I have no being cool. I, they already know. I got no shape up. Uh, you got good lighting. <laughs> you got good skin. I look like I'm hopeless with a microphone. So that's good. So, and you your your viewers at home know you're honest, man. That's the thing. They know you're honest. They can believe everything you ever told them on this podcast, man. And my best friend told me, he said, uh, he said, he said, it's odd because, you know, I got the wild hair going on right now, too, just because I'm doing the natural thing. But he said, Frank, uh, I want you to look at most of the successful African-American men in our in our history. Yeah, and he said, none of them got shape ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm about to go look at everyone. I, I got pictures. I got like the whole. I'm about to he look at be Frederick pictures of Frederick Douglass. You know what I'm saying? That that Frederick Douglass was was going a little wild out there. He, he couldn't trying... have okay, but Martin Luther King had a shape up. Nah, I mean most of the pictures he pulled out, he was not shaped up, man. <laughs> he was looking a little fuzzy, man. Like you know, somebody would have hit. He would have went in the club. Somebody would be like, "Hey, man, do you? I got a card for a barber. I like." They would have hooked him up or something, you know. 
And uh, we was we was looking hard because at the time, President Obama was still the president. And I was like, I, I know he's been shaped up before. But at that time in his presidency, he was like, man, I don't even care about these. He wasn't wear his wave cap no more. It was. Can I tell you about a, the time randomly? This is another tangent. I did uh, shook, shook hands with Obama one time. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you I, didn't tell me about that. And I was like, yo, his hands are skinny as hell and then, uh, slimy. But <laughs> because, no, because I was at a conference. Yeah. And it was a healthcare conference. Shout out to my father in law, Family USA. And Obama was on stage. And I said, Obama, I reached my hand out. And he grabbed my hand. And I was like, yo, his hand is bony as hell. Oh. But I think he was, you know, he's skinny. But I did, not, I did not expect for like two seconds where I grabbed his hand and he held my hand that his hand would have felt like that. Oh, you wanted it to be like a nice warm hand that was maybe hand, not slimy? Warm. I wanted to be warm and like strong, like strong fingers. That joke was not that strong. That's your next shot for shot question. You should set it up. You'd be like, hey, I shook President Obama's hands. What it, what Two seconds. Been like. My wife was there too. She got evidence. I think I took it. I think I took it. I was like, this is like, uh, this is the second term. The phones wasn't that great. I got to find it. I got like a selfie of me uh, behind me. I got to find that joke. I, I did it. I touched it, Obama's hand. You know, it's crazy. I got like all of my friends. Like, I feel like all of my close friends have pictures with either uh, President Obama or Michelle. I'm the only one. That- I don't have no pictures with with President Obama. I don't know. I don't know how that's a thing. Everyone around my my commissioning certificate is signed by President Obama, and I've never seen him or shook his hand or well, anything of the sort. That, that that threw me off. I did not expect his hand to be like that. <laughs> it was two seconds. He was like Obama. He touched it. I was like, I put my hand. Down. I was like, what I was so hyped. Though. I was like, I'm not washing his hands. I washed my hands when I went to the bathroom. So I'm like, <laughs> like, like, like so. So there it is. I'm not um, gonna wash my hands until I do. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And my wife was there too, so she could verify the story. This was fact. I touch Obama's hand. Um, with that being said, this has been a great podcast. Uh, this is the part of the show. I call it shout outs and plugs. Shout out, show love to anyone you want to show love to, and then plug all the plugs that you want to share. All oh, I'm taking note right now. I'll make sure to put it in the show notes. So shout outs and plugs. Uh, for a shout out, um, I want to first and foremost shout out my wife, uh, who is by far the backbone of everything that I do, um, and supports me in every bit of everything that I do. Like I could not even believe, um, you know, and I don't even have the ability to thank her the way that she needs to appropriately be thanked. So, um, I want to shout my wife out, Keisha, you know, um, love you, love you very much. You doing a, um, awesome job keeping me on a straight and narrow so if i got one shout out that's who that's who i'm gonna shout out you uh, have more than one shout out you shout out oh snap okay <laughs> uh, i ain't know i get like infinite shout outs okay infinite, infinite uh, shout out <laughs> uh, i want to shout out you uh, for uh, one, this journey with you, like, you know, uh, beginning a friendship is 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 pretty dope, man, because uh, you're creative. We occupy some of the same spaces. Um, you're a thinker, which, uh, you know, is pretty dope to have those types of conversations with people trying to grow something or at least have um, more than surface level conversations about something that you're passionate about. Um, and I like seeing the work that's going on um, around you. So uh, definitely going to shout you out uh, for having me on the podcast. Um, I want to shout out my chapter, um, uh, Alpha Phi Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. You can follow us on Instagram as Norfolk Alphas. Um, you can also find us on um, Facebook uh, as uh, Norfolk Alphas. Actually, that's going to be a tag, but it'll be the Alpha Phi Lambda chapter. You pop it in there. It's SEO, so you'll find it. Alpha Phi Lambda chapter should pop up pretty strong in Facebook. Uh, give us a follow over there. You might see my face in a couple of places with my unco- uncombed, unkept hair um could be kind of dope uh to, to see us there so shout outs to the chapter um shout out to uh my business partner uh xm lee uh we have a business called gorilla style media uh where we uh, take small businesses and help them reach their media goals through photography website development apparel creation things of that nature uh so xm uh shout out uh there you want to follow that business got a teeny tiny instagram page we're trying to uh, about start automating and growing as we talked about earlier you can find us gorilla style media at gorilla style media um another plug my instagram is kind of whack right now for me to take pictures i said that earlier um but do me a favor if if your viewers can go over to my instagram and you know 
just give me some constructive criticism to see what I need to do to get my work seen. That's going to be King Siri 06, no spaces, King Siri 06. Um, that's a uh, dang, that's kind of all the plugs I could I could think about. I'd plugged in the Navy, but um, they don't really like being plugged like that. So, <laughs> yeah, so I wrote that down. So, I got Gorilla Style Media, I got your chapter, and I got you know, those things. So I'll make sure to put those in the show notes. Oh, snap! Don't forget uh, to That's give me some enough. love on Virginia Alphas. So, VA yeah. underscore Alphas for Vacapath, uh, and Virginia Alphas on um, Facebook. Let's give uh, the state of Virginia some love if you, you like Alphas. You like seeing the types of accomplishments that are going on in Virginia. Follow us over there. About to uh, really turn up the juice on the technology there. Try not to be a finna. Trying to be a doer. So uh, (laughs) definitely looking forward to that. Uh, Chip on over there. Drop us a comment. Give us some love. That'd be dope. So that was it. That was definitely some great things. I got all the, I took the notes. I'll make sure to put those in the show notes. Please like and follow all those different medias that uh, Brother Brother Bonner put on there. Definitely doing great work. I definitely am impressed by all the things that he's doing. And, and you know, like I said, creative minds, we, we bounce off and brainstorm off each other. And, you know, just in the short time I've known him, uh, he's pushed me to do new things. I definitely gave him a shout out because, like, I definitely never thought to look at my old stuff. Just random ideas that he comes up with that is inspiring. So please show him some love, but also follow his journey in the creative space. Um, if you like this episode, uh, please follow it, uh, listen to it, share it with your family and friends. If you have a question for the podcast, you can leave a voicemail at 571-336-6560. That's 571-336-6560. It's the podcast hotline. Leave a voicemail, whatever. Um, and this has been a great show. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on it. Uh, and definitely listeners, check it out. So we're out. Share positivity share um, good vibes enjoy the show and thank you thank you for listening to positive filter a podcast that focuses on family friends career with a little self-help along the way if you enjoyed this podcast please share it with your family and friends and like the facebook page spreading positivity of movement thanks for listening